welcome back to my channel my name is Ina and I am a knitter from Norway and I am all about knitting and yarn and all the woolly good stuff <laughs> so that's what I will be talking to you about today so I thought I would pop in today and show you some summer knits I am now in the middle of my three weeks vacation and um, that is super nice. Uh, we have been um, spending one week at my parents' cabin in the mountain uh, and doing lots of family stuff there. And this week we are staying at home. We are doing some things that needs to be done in the house and we are just hanging out and relaxing and um, this morning I did something that I've been thinking about doing for a very long time but I think it's the first time ever that I have been staying in bed <laughs> um, the entire morning until noon just knitting and watching podcasts <laughs> Uh, my daughter, daughters think that I'm super nerdy, but um, it was a lovely start of the day. <laughs> um, yes, um, and next week we will be uh, going to our cabin in the mountains of Meroker. And yeah, so it's a very relaxing and nice holiday in my opinion um so i've been doing some knitting and i have been casting on a new shawl i wanted to show you that um it has been an obsession of mine since i cast it on and it's quite funny because i have been thinking about this shawl for um two years maybe, two and a half. I think this pattern was released uh, either one and a half and, or two and a half years ago. And everybody and their grandmother have been knitting this shawl. Um, but I am super late to the party and I finally uh, am doing it now. I purchased a yarn kit for this particular shawl uh, in Trondheim last year. Um, I still have been very much on the fence if I wanted to do the shawl or not because it is huge. Uh, but in the end I decided I wanted to go for it. Um, yeah, here it is so far. Do you recognize it? <laughs> so this is the Find Your Fade. It is a shawl by Andrea Maori or Drea Renee Nitz. Uh, yes. And this is knit out of Hedgehog Fibers. Uh, their sock base. And the kit that I bought is um, consisting of all the original colorways that um, the shawl was made out of. So it starts off with, with this uh, color which is called pollen, pollen, uh, ochre yellow and it is fading into another. This is the fool's gold. And now I'm on the third colorway. It's not very easy to see the difference between two and three. I don't remember the colorway name for number three. But here they are. This is Fool's Gold. And this is the third one, which I can't remember the name of. 
I have done one change to the rest of the colors. Uh, this was supposed to come in as number four, but I have decided to go for this one instead, which is Film Noir. Then I will fade in this one. I don't remember the colorway name. And then we have these two at the end. So it will go from yellow to lots of speckles to a somewhat uh, calmer colorway, which is almost white. And then light pink, bright pink, and reddish, blackish pink at the end. And I already got lots of stitches on the needles. And um, I'm starting to feel that uh, the rows takes longer and longer to finish. Although it's garter stitch, it is going to be a massive shawl in the end. I, I'm knitting um, a bit loose. I started off with the recommended needle size, which is 3.5 millimeters, uh, but I switched to 3. 0 because I didn't enjoy the fabric and I I know that the shawl will eventually become large so I don't want a large and floppy looking shawl I want it to look a bit more firm and yeah so that's why I went down the needle size so that is my find your fade. So I didn't I didn't fancy knitting it when everybody else was doing it, but now it's okay. <laughs> um, my next finished object. No, it's not finished. It's on the needles, but I've done quite a, a bit of knitting on this one as well. I was quite determined to finish it uh, last week uh, while at the cabin, but then I cast it on for the shawl and I couldn't lay the shawl down. So uh, the sweater hasn't gotten any love or attention the past week and a half. But this is the weekender sweater which is another pattern by Andrea Maori she is a very talented designer um, and I love many of her designs um, but the fact that I'm knitting two of her designs uh, right now is more a coincidence than anything else um, so, this is a, a lovely, like, boxy shaped sweater, and it is knit in reverse stockinette, which means um, it is knit in stockinette, but it will be turned inside out, so the... Um, the re reversed stockinette will be uh, showing when I wear, wear the sweater. And I have, <laughs> I'm past, you know, the, the, the stage where you separate for sleeves. And at the moment I have finished knitting um, the front part. Have I? No, I haven't. <laughs> okay, now I recall. So, uh, after you set, separate for, for sleeves, 
you knit the front and the back separately uh, and you knit a certain length uh, in stockinette and then you switch to smaller needles and you are supposed to do a ribbing uh, section on the top and then you do the same on the back side and uh, when you're finished with the ribbing uh, on both sides you are um, weaving the shoulder parts together. So uh, the reason why I stopped before I came to the ribbing or at the point where I was supposed to start the ribbing was that I needed to go down one needle size for the ribbing and I didn't have my my spare needle tips with me so that's why so actually I have started on the other side instead and yeah I will eventually do the ribbing uh, both on the back side and the front side and yes that is the lovely sweater and then when I'm finished with the, the top part I'm going to pick up for sleeves around the armholes and just knit them on. It's basically a you know a sweater where you don't have to do any um, stitching at the end. You just have to you know fasten uh, any loose ends or weave them in. And that's that's uh, a knit that I really enjoy. So yeah, here you can see the marker. This is where I was at when I showed you the sweater last time. So done quite a bit. And yes, the the lovely yarn that I'm knitting the sweater out of is a Brooklyn Tweed Loft. Um, which is a thinner yarn than the patterns call for, pattern calls for, but um, I like the very light and um, airy fabric that this creates. You can probably see, no, you can't see anything in this light, but it is just a slight hint of see-through but not enough that it bothers me and I also know that this yarn will grow a little bit and fluff up when I wash it so I think it will turn out perfect so yes that is the weekender sweater and let me think I have a sock that is done, almost done that is. This is a sock that I am knitting out of youth yarns, I believe it's called. I am not sure about the pronunciation there, but it is self-striping and I love the colors and it is knit from, or I at least, I knit from the toe and did some decreases on both sides, no some increases <laughs> and I'm not quite sure how far I was up the foot last time, maybe up here somewhere? And when I got to the yellow striping, which is the last, very last color, I started on a 2x2 two two ribbing. And I have been binding off, but I ran out of yarn. So I couldn't complete the bind off and I got, I don't know, 15 stitches left um, so I'm thinking about 
maybe to just pull out uh, some of the uh, just a little bit of yarn from the other ball and complete it with that I think that will be fine these socks are so long so I don't think it will matter if if one of them are one or two rounds shorter than the other one okay so Uh, the yarn consisted of two balls like this and the stripes are equal in both balls so it's you're supposed to knit two uh, similar socks out of the yarn and I I thought that the striping sequence was so lo lovely so I didn't want to mess it up by knitting in uh, a heel uh, and I didn't know exactly where to put in that heel uh, either. So <laughs> I have been decided just to knit the whole tube and finish off with a solid ribbing at the top. And then I will do a true after thought heel at the end. Meaning that I will measure where I want my heel to go and then I will cut. Uh, one uh, one stitch and undo the stitches uh, to both sides of the sock and put them on uh, needles and then just knit away uh, an afterthought heel it's a very clever way of making a heel actually I like them but I don't do it very often. I tend to knit the heel while I knit the sock instead. I watched a podcast where they were talking about Christmas in July, meaning that um, you can either knit Christmas gifts uh, or knit something Christmas related in July. Mm. And I was really inspired by that. I cannot remember now which podcast that was, but I have some had some Christmas themed um, yarn laying around, and I couldn't help myself. I really had to cast on for a pair of Christmas socks, and so I did. So here they are. This is um, Christmas sock yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners and I'm not sure what the colorway is called, Holyberry? Maybe. I have made a project page on Ravelry with the pair and the colorway name is, is right there. And I did um, did a contrasting cuff, a very short cuff, um, for me at least. <laughs> but I, I think it turned out quite nice. The cuff is 3 by 2 ribbing. And then I have continued down the leg with 4 by 1. Uh, but I haven't done it every row. I have knitted one row just knit stitches and then the next row four by one meaning knitting four stitches and then purling one uh, just to create this this kind of a rib pattern which I enjoy. I think they're fun to knit and very nice gives a nice fit when you wear them and then I did the contrasting heel uh, I did the fish lips kiss heel which is another heel that I really enjoy both to knit and to wear and yes so this 
particular knit has been uh, with me in my purse and in or in my handbag um, so it's been all over the place the last weeks and I've done a row, a row now and then so that's a nice little Christmassy project I have to say though that I am also knitting some Christmas gifts at the moment so I think I will I, I will uh, not show you that right now and hopefully I will do some Christmas gift knitting uh, in between other projects and uh, yeah I thought I would start now so that it will not be a rush just before Christmas but I'm planning to do Christmas knitting for my family uh, this year and yeah I will not tell you more about that right now but probably closer to Christmas I can I can show you what it looks like yes that was uh, pretty much everything that I have been knitting on um, the past weeks I I did have um, another project that I started last year. You know, my last episode uh, in this podcast was pretty much a recap of the past six months uh, as I haven't been podcasting much since uh, Christmas. And uh, I have been locating another project that I have been working on, but that I forgot to tell you about in my last episode and this is um, scrappy blankets or our cozy memories blankets um, and it is it is knit for my son he is six years old and he really wanted a colorful blanket for for him so and uh, he has been picking out a lot of the colors especially in the beginning he was very eager back then in November or whenever I started it so it is I started down here and I did the entire first uh, row And let me see, let me see, yes, I I have been showing this um, to you previously, uh, but that was many months ago, and I guess the last time I showed you maybe, ooh, I missed it now oh here it is I think this is the marker of the last square and all of the other squares on the top row is new and it's, as you can see I have started another square here I think that this is the width that I'm going for which is mm, 10 squares 10 squares wide and then I have to just continue knitting length, lengthwise until I have the desired, desired length <laughs> yes uh, I did um, cozy memories blanket um, I think I finished it a couple of years ago or no I think I finished it and showed you just before Christmas but uh, it has been finished for a long time but I did just uh, finishing with a um, um, couple of rows crocheted around around it to create a border that was the, the final thing um, 
but I, I have been very inspired by a friend of mine who did um, a cozy memories blanket just like this with uh, you know separate borders around every square and it makes the colors stand out uh, and it's so nice and it's uh, really quite easy to, to do. I literally just knit the first five um, garter ridges of every square in this um, deep deep charcoal grey, it's almost black color and then I continue with um, with a scrappy color and do the decreases all the way as you do on on uh, cozy memories blanket so yeah um, my squares are 39 stitches So they're quite large, but even though I, I think I crank out one square in 30 minutes. So whenever I can sit down and do some squares, it is growing quite fast. But this is a, a in between project anyway. So um, I have no goal as for when this is going to be completed. So yes, it's very nice. Nice little scrappy project. And many of the squares I'm knitting are out of the little minis from my opal calendar. I had two opal cal calendar advent calendars and I got a whole lot of the minis in here. I have one new acquisition to show you. I am in a stage now where I really try hard not to buy any more new yarn for uh, for a bit. I I have a lot of lovely yarn and I need to just knit out of my stash for a while. Uh, but I am participating in Hedgehog Fibers uh, monthly club subscription I have been receiving uh, yarn for June, which I showed you last time, and now I got the, the hank of yarn for July. And um, here it is. This is a real beauty. I'm a member of the Twist Sock Club. And the Twist Sock is a blue face Leicester nylon blend in fingering weight. And this colorway is called Pollock. And I think all the colorways are exclusive to the club. So that's quite cool. And this is so beautiful. I have no plans for these skeins, but they will become Treasures in my yarn uh, stash for a while, and then I will figure out what to do with them. And talking about knitting out of stash, I have been discovering a couple of new to me podcasts lately. I have been binge watching all of their episodes, and uh, it has been a real joy. And they're both, or especially one of them, are uh, focusing quite uh, intensively of knitting out of stash. Um, they're both in Norwegian, um, but I'm not sure how the possibilities of translating podcasts are. If you're, maybe you can put on some translation as subtitles or such. I'm not sure, but. Um, anyway, I can really recommend to check out these ladies. Um, the first one is called 
Heimstrika and they are two uh, cheerful lovely ladies from Trundlag uh, which is the area where I live and they are knitting all the gorgeous stuff uh, out of their own stash and they have uh, decided that uh, 2019 is the year where, where they are not going to acquire any more yarn and only knit out of the lovely yarn that they have already and that is super inspiring to watch all the beautiful things they are cranking out of stash yarn and um, that has helped me a lot to focus more on the nice things that I have lie laying around rather than jumping on new acquisitions which is very tempting <sighs> well and the other podcast is called Torette on Vrang um, which is a podcast um, made uh, by three sisters uh, in a more southern part of Norway and they are knitting all the beautiful things out of gorgeous colors and um, they have such a, a great dynamics between them uh, I find myself laughing out loud <laughs> because um, you know it's something uh, with sisters uh, and the relationship that they grow over the years and all the all the things that that doesn't need to be said but you you uh, I don't know they communicate in a great way and uh, uh, a lot of humor is uh, is there and a lot of things uh, between the lines so it's a great podcast and I, <laughs> I really enjoy that one uh, on so many levels <laughs> and yeah so that that is definitely two Norwegian speaking uh, podcasts that um, you need to to check out if you're uh, in the lookout for for new podcasts um so yes i i think that's everything for now uh this podcast is short and sweet but i hope that you enjoyed it and that you're having a great summer uh wherever you live and whatever climate you're in um i as i said i will be going to the cabin next week and we will be doing hikings and we are going fishing in our boats and um, maybe finish up some painting of the outside of the cabin and yeah I hope to be knitting in the shadows hopefully the weather will stay nice and yeah I'm looking forward to another week up there. It's a beautiful place. So that's it. I hope to see you quite soon again. And in the meantime, happy knitting. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs>